coming up next on the Conscious Courage Podcast. Nursing has been a blessing and a curse. And I'll say it's been a blessing because it has really shown me how many people really don't live their lives. How many people do not go after their dreams? How many people get stuck? They get complacent. Good morning. Welcome to the Conscious Courage Podcast and sing it with me. Happy Motivational Monday. I am your host, Devane Tache. I meet with you all every Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to provide practical steps toward our inner healing journey or what I've coined internal glow up. Whether you're here as a first time listener or returning, thank you for tuning in. The team and I are grateful to every subscriber via YouTube and every listener via Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify. With a special shout out to all of our IGU babes keeping up with us on social media on all platforms at CC Podcast with DT. Y'all are locked in and we are too hyped to have you here, all right? Now, ensure to listen on through so you can receive those practical steps as well as any announcements that we may have. Let's dive on into today's episode. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Conscious Courage Podcast and happy seeing you with me, Motivation No Monday. I am your host, Devani Tache. I come to you all every single Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, both via YouTube as well as all streaming platforms to bring you new content. But in the month of October, y'all, you know, we normally do a deep dive and we're looking at our inner healing and our development. But this month, we are all about real estate, how to get to the bag, how to build our generational wealth. Okay. So buckle up, y'all. Prepare your sales. It's already been so, so good. And it will only continue to get better. Now, you see on my screen, Miss Whitney, and let me go ahead and give her an official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest speaker for today's session, Whitney Metcalf. With a background as diverse and inspiring as hers, listen y'all, it exemplifies the true essence of resilience, determination, as well as success. Hailing from Wichita, Kansas, she embarked on her journey into real estate against all odds. As a young mother at the age of 15, she defied stereotypes and pursued her dreams with unwavering passion. Today, her son is 21 years young and thriving in college, which is a true testament to her dedication and commitment. Currently balancing the roles of a full-time trauma emergency room nurse, realtor and investor in the vibrant Dallas-Fort Worth area. Whitney's story is a testament to the power of perseverance as well as the pursuit of one's passion. Her journey into real estate investing is nothing short of remarkable. Her love of real estate blossomed at a young age fueled by countless hours of watching HGTV. I resonate with that right there. With her mother <laughs> envisioning the endless possibilities of transforming properties. We will explore her first home purchase to her present ongoing flip project. She is set apart and not only because of her impressive portfolio of accomplishments, but her unwavering commitment to sharing her knowledge and empowering others in the realm of real estate investing. I can attest to that. Her expertise in fix and flip projects is exemplified by her present milestone, successfully completing her first full gut renovation earlier in this year. But it doesn't stop there, y'all. She is also a prolific author and educator, generously sharing her wealth of knowledge through free downloads on her website as and her ebook that we will disclose at the end of this episode. Additionally, her 101 coaching sessions are the real deal, okay? She provides you with deal analysis and practical expertise, and it's all invaluable, y'all. You can't even put a, a price on it, okay? Her resources are inspiring, and it's a true testament to her real estate guru-ness. That's a made-up word. In conclusion, she embodies the spirit of resilience, determination, and expertise in the realm of real estate investing. And it is an honor, truly, to have her with us today. And I have no doubt that her insights will inspire us all. So please welcome 
with me, Mecca. Because I don't have a button yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You made me sound all like esteemed and stuff, girl. Because you are all esteemed and stuff. Is there anything that you would like to add before we transition on into just our conversation? No, you pretty much you pretty much covered everything. Like I'm just I'm just a regular schmegular girl. Like if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I'm trying to like, you know, change our generations, change the culture, like to be owners like it drives me crazy to see like you know those grandmas and grandpas working at walmart because they have to so i'm just trying to help be a change agent in in our community and not trying you are doing oh, yes. you're already implementing yes ma'am like i said y'all i am like i can testify okay running numbers i don't know if we're gonna get into running numbers on here but i know that you have a whole program and that yeah. you were talking to people about because baby running them is it okay when you fat finger me and you misplace the digits it's really not all that easy even <laughs> with the calculator <laughs> at all okay so uh, my first question is will you share your journey into the world of real estate investing and how it aligns with your personal growth as well as empowerment yeah, so I'll say 2023, 2022, 2023 were definitely like hard years for me, especially 2022. Like I had a really good friend pass. I had my father pass. I joined a real estate program. It was like I had gotten out of a five-year relationship. There was just so many things, you know, going through the emotions of my son going off to college. Like there was just so many things going on. And I was travel nursing. So I was right, way across the world. I was in Washington uh, state, far away from all my family and everybody. So I just went through like this whole spiritual journey. And I was just like, you know what, God, like I got to do something different. So I literally went on this hundred day journey. I just made it up myself. I made it like a just like a, a competition with myself where I had to read my Bible. I did this journaling. I did all these things and it just really set me up to be in the right place and to the right mindset and to get closer to like my friends who were doing the same things that I was doing and to just get out of my head that I, I wasn't, you know, good enough or whatever. Like I literally wrote down scriptures that said what God thinks about me. And so that kind of changed my whole mindset. And so then when I got a word at a conference last year and it was, he said, why would you trust somebody else with your dreams? Mm -hmm. And I was literally trying to work on real estate in Texas, but from Washington, Elon Musk had told him that. And I was like, okay. And it just kept replaying in my head over and over and over. And I kept telling my friends like, y'all, I think I'm supposed to go back to Texas. So I came back to Texas last July. Um, I got my real estate license. I hit the ground running. I got my real estate license. I um, was presented a deal from a wholesaler who also was going to be the bank for me as far as a real estate deal. So I just presented it to some uh, people in one of my groups and got some partners and we started flipping. So Okay, that was a lot. So condolences to you. As Thank you. Your father. Yes, ma'am. In that transition. And I know being away from family, but being set apart, I'm all the way on the East Coast. And look, every single last one of my family members are on the West Coast. So mm -hmm. I can sympathize and sympathize with you when you're going through moments like that. I lost my grandfather last year and I just toughed it out. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to work and and I'll be fine. And it wasn't until I was in place at his services that where it really all hit me. So, yeah. Yes, I understand how what that feels like, not to lose a parent, but what it feels like to be somewhere else in your grieving loss and mm -hmm. any that to be. So good on you. I heard resilience in that. And then that hundred day journey, like if we had all the time, like that could be a segment part two. Yeah. Like, about that. That's intense. I've done and it was still a blessing. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a true transformation. Yeah, it was hard, but, you know, nothing good ever comes easy. So mm -hmm. I was like, I have to do this. I got a journal um, and it was a hundred day journal. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't, her name is Marshawn. I have to give you the name. I can't remember her full name. Daniels, I think. But 
she has a hundred day journal of like believing bigger is what it's called. And so I got that and I started that, but I added on to not just doing the journal. Like I changed Mm -hmm. the way I ate. I changed the people I talked to, the things I did. I was going to the gym consistently. Like I was writing out scriptures and watching sermons and I made it like where these were things that I had to do during these hundred days. And it just really just, it really changed everything for me. That's a blessing. Now, toward the end of that, you mentioned you did get into wholesaling a bit and then you started flipping. So just for the people tuning in who may not have a, an understanding of the wholesale and verse flipping, can you elaborate a little more? Yeah. So I work with wholesalers. I don't necessarily wholesale myself. I do work with them, like buying, like I'll buy from them. But a wholesaler is just someone who... They find properties at a discount and then they'll sell them to like flippers or people who want to like buy and hold properties or just investors in general. So I bought my property that I flipped my full renovation from a wholesaler who presented it to me at a very discounted price. So that's how I got into that. Okay. And that's the big gut experience you had. I mean, like, you want to talk about that? Yeah. Yes. So my flip that I got was originally supposed to be just like a lipstick, what we call a lipstick flip, which is, you know, like paint, flooring, just cosmetic stuff. And it mainly was, but since it is an older home and it had been sitting for over a year empty, there was some things that we had to change out. Like some of the framing in the walls had rotted. So we had, and some of the plumbing was old. Uh, We didn't have to do any major plumbing, uh, just like the pipes inside the house and things like that. But it was, you know, it's just different seeing like full walls taken out, like with no toilet. It's like the very beginning of a house, you know, so it was just. I was nervous because they had to take out, you know, all the old tiles, some of the old walls and just everything. So I was just nervous, like, man, this is a it's a it's a lot. But it turned out great. So good. How do you stay encouraged? How do you keep yourself encouraged during that session? Because I've seen properties and I, I was like, look, if I don't see it finished, I don't trust that it is going to end the way that it should. And so I would just walk away. <laughs> but you kept yeah. on going. So how did you stay encouraged? And actually, when this property was presented to me, I was kind of hesitant because I didn't know if I was ready. I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I'm ready. And so uh, when I finally called him back and was like, OK, I want it. He was like, oh, well, somebody beat you to the punch. And I was like, dang, well, OK, like, you know, it is what it is. I prayed about it. And then I was actually like at the dog park with the dogs and I just prayed about it. And I was like, God, you know what, if it's for me, then, you know, like whatever you have for me, I'm going to be ready for it, you know, and accept it and go through the process. And literally like the next morning he called me and was like, Hey, they didn't even go by the house. So it's yours if you still want it. So I was like, okay, I guess, I guess it's go time. (laughs) So I got the house and uh, just, we just got in, like literally just got in there and got to work. But it was hard. And I just stayed encouraged by keeping good connections with my network. Like I have a group of friends. We're all investors. And we literally are on the phone pretty much every day with one another, texting, talking. We have uh, accountability calls Tuesday through Friday at 5 a.m. my time. So I just, you know, just dug in, like I said, talk to them like every day in prayer. Like I would walk around that house, like literally in circles, praying to. That's so good. And one, I wouldn't say takeaway because it was so much in there, but it's the fact that your prayer was answered like that was like, oh, I don't, I don't have no worries. Granted, we're, we, you know, at times we can just lean on to our own understanding or have our own fleshly thoughts and feelings. But how beautiful it is to have gone into that knowing, okay, God said yes. So it's like, yeah, it work. <laughs> and then, though, just because God said yes, don't mean it's still going to be easy. It's still going to be like, go perfectly because it still has not gone perfectly. It still has not, like, it's currently um, on the market. So it's been on the market longer than I would have wanted it to. Of course, you wanted to get on the market and get off the next day. (laughs) But it's been on the market a little bit longer than I wanted it to. We've had a lot of rain, a lot of storms, all kinds of stuff happening in Texas and happening in that area. I had to, you know, fix some little things here and there, but it still turned like, I still feel like it turned out great and it's still going to be a great 
great property for somebody. Yes, it will be. Jesus' name is getting off the market. Look, the end of this week. <laughs> By the end of this video, y'all. By the time this video airs, it will be. I was gonna be Benzo. Yeah. Two, two more under her belt. Two, three more. Listen. How about we don't put a number on it? Several mm -hmm. more. <laughs> underneath her yes. belt. So, what is the fundamental principles behind like the strategy of fix and flip? And then, how could someone approach the fix and flip with like the mindset of this is going to work? Like, well, of course, there may be some hiccups, but at the end of the day, just overcoming those hurdles that may arise. So, uh, first off, like fundamental principles, you have to be organized, you have to know your numbers. Because I think fix and flips is where people really get, they get, they lose numbers. They lose the bills. They, there's things in there that they don't add into their budget. So it makes them, you know, in the negative. So you have to be organized and you have to know your numbers. Like if you don't know your numbers on a fix and flip, then it's going to be hard for you to get out of it and make a profit. Because uh, people can take advantage of you. Uh, so many things can happen and go wrong. And if you don't have those contingencies built in your budget, you're just going to be you're going to be all over the place. And mm -hmm. you can't be all over the place with a fix and flip. You have to have your ducks in a row. So that's the main thing with fix and flips. And then what was the second part of your question? Like, and the second part almost goes off of what we just touched on. And that is, OK, let's say. Somebody goes into their first fix and flip or any fix and flip, no matter where it is on the racket stack or how many they've done, but they hit um, a wall, literally, mm -hmm. but they hit um, <laughs> a, little, a hurdle or something and they have to recharge and just keep on going. What are some additional uh, tools, tips, tricks that you would uh, offer up to those people? Okay. Yeah, definitely have a mentor, have somebody that's doing it, have somebody who's done more than you, have somebody that you can get on the phone with at the drop of a dime. Like I have a, my broker is definitely my mentor. My mentor that sold me the house, like I have him because he's done a million fix and flips. So I can call him, I say my broker, I can call about anything real estate. And then I have a, another realtor friend that I has been a realtor for years that I can call on and ask questions. Um, my friends that are investors. So definitely have mentors and people like you can get on the phone with and ask questions to because Stuff is going to come up that you're, you're like, OK, what do I do in this situation? OK, this subcontractor didn't show up. So I need somebody to come fix this before I can do this. So you need to just have those good relationships and contacts. And then just also just be present. If you're going to be a flipper, you have to be present or you have to have a, a project manager present. Because if you're not present, it's just like when you had a substitute teacher, you know, like when you had a substitute teacher, everybody was acting up with the substitute teacher. The mother kids was acting up. Yeah, not, not us, the mother kids. <laughs> so it's just like that. Like you need to be present. So just pop up. Like I would just pop up like, hey, what y'all doing? I'm just walking through. So, you know, make, make sure people are working when they're supposed to be working. You know, make sure your supplies are where they're supposed to be. How much you got delivered, they're supposed to be there. So you have to be be present in all aspects of it. Not just the finances, not just the construction, everything you need to you need to be present. Now, is zoning a thing? And I'm I haven't delved in fix and flips, wholesaling, or or any form of renovating of property, or um, and I'm thinking about zoning because of my time of watching HGTV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they talk about having your permits and zoning and checking with the city first and things being held up yeah. because no one did X, Y, and Z. So, can you share some of that? Or you got the <laughs> yeah. So I didn't have to do any zoning or anything because I wasn't uh, doing any major, anything major. Like if you're okay. doing like the electrical was already done on my house. But if like if you have to do any major electrical, any major plumbing where you have to, you know, pull out floors and relay pipes and stuff like that, you have to get that first approved. And then you have to they have to see the work before you close up the walls or close up the floors or whatever. I didn't have to do any any of that, but okay. it's definitely a real thing that you have to take into consideration if you need to uh, with the city or parish or wherever you live, whoever's in charge of that. 
As far as zoning, uh, you really only have to get zoning involved if you are changing your zoning. So mm -hmm. if I am a single family home, but I want to make this now a multifamily house, home, then I have to get that approved by zoning and usually have to have like an architect's like drawings and, you know, how you're going to do this or whatever, because they have to make sure it's going to be, you know, structurally sound for people to be living on multiple levels or sharing walls or whatever. But I didn't have to do any of that because, yes, that can take a long time um, to get the city out there because you I mean, you on their time when you have to do that. But I was good. Oh, good, good. Oh, so thank you for dropping uh, those nuggets because I always wonder, like, is this just a part of the show or I know it's a thing, mm -mm. but I haven't met anyone who's like had to oblige by it, I guess. Now, you mentioned numbers, knowing your numbers. I was like, you have to be organized. You have to know your numbers. Are you mm -hmm. OK with like, giving us an example of what running those numbers look like? Because you run the numbers quick. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And what's what's so crazy is that math is not even my strongest subject. Like mm -hmm. I literally got good at numbers because I made myself good get good at numbers. Like just I made myself practice every day. I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of just numbers. And now like I help other people with their numbers. So some of the more simpler numbers, there's there's a lot of different numbers, but some of the more simpler numbers, you know, if you're looking at like a fix and flip, you need to know what the after repair value is in your area. So you need to know, like, after I fix this up, how much is this house going to be worth? That's your after repair value. You need to know, like, what your renovation costs are going to be, what your holding costs are going to be. Um, and your holding costs are like your uh, if you're going to have a mortgage, if you, your bills, because you do need to have on the electricity and the water and the gas and all that stuff. So you need to know all those costs. So with the fix and flip, you use what's called the 70 percent rule. So with the 70 percent rule, you take 70 percent of your after repair value minus uh, your renovation and your holding costs. And that gives you the maximum price you should pay for a property. So that's like the main one you use for fix and flips um, for buy and hold properties. The uh, you mainly want to look at the rents and then you just literally subtract all of your uh, expenses, like your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, all of you know those things. If you have to do lawn care um, and you subtract those from your rents and that gives you like your net um, income. So pretty, not not super hard, but uh, but it is something that you do have to practice. And it is something that, you know, like I said, there's some more little things you have to look at as far as properties, especially when you get into like uh, multifamily properties. Yes. But once you get it, you once, once you do it so much, you can start looking at properties and you'll look at numbers and then you'll be like, oh, like this is not going to work. Like you don't even have to like write it down and run it. You can just look at it and know like, oh, this is not going to work or yeah. like this is too high or they not charging enough for rent or, you know, this rent is not going to cover this mortgage. Like you just start to. You just know, like, because you do it so much, it's like your mind can just see it before you go through the numbers. It's a second language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and that's what's, uh, oh my gosh, I love it. And I'm not going to elaborate. I was, okay, what I was going to go into, because I've already started, is the after repair value and how that can look like a cop. And you can work with your realtor or mm -hmm. the individual can go out for themselves and look and see, okay, well, how many properties have sold in this area within a certain proximity? And then for how much it kind of reference those at their own comps, if mm -hmm. you will. I was going to open up that box. But I'll go on to the next area because you can't give away all the tea so that they tune <laughs> Your YouTube channel and your ebook and all of this stuff. Okay, these are yes. just snippets. Make them want some more. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so you've gone through the gut experience. If I'm not mistaken, you are on your second property, right? Something along those lines. No, well, I do have a buy and hold property okay. that I've had for a couple years now. Uh, the tenants I have in there right now, I absolutely love them. They do all the things. Like They're like, do you mind if we paint this? And hey, we fixed the door on the shed because the storm broke it. Like They just do everything. And I'm just like, oh, okay, thank y'all. Like I love y'all. They never laid on their red, like nothing. Like 
So <laughs> I have that buy and hold property and then the property that I just recently flipped. I am in the market for another property. I'm looking at some and some auctions in the Midwest because that's where I'm from. You can usually get in uh, pretty low, like even like auction lists, like some of these little towns. Sometimes you can get a tax deed sale for $400, $500, like still to this day. And it's crazy oh, yeah. that more people don't do it. But uh, so, yeah, I'm in the market looking for um, some properties. At break, are you seeking an electrifying speaker to ignite transformation in your audience will look no further. Hi, I'm Devane Touche, real estate investor, Air Force veteran, and host of the Conscious Courage podcast, where new episodes are released every Monday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via YouTube and all streaming audio platforms. I specialize in delivering impactful keynote speeches that inspire change and elevate your minds. Whether it's a virtual gathering or an in-person event, I bring passion, expertise, and a unique delivery to every arena or every environment that I'm in. Let's captivate your audience together and create an unforgettable experience. Contact me today to book your next event and let's embark on this journey of transformation or let's get all of your attendees on this journey toward internal glow up. You can book me via my website by going to www.divanetache.com. I'll spell that for you. It is www.d-a-v as in Victor, O-N-E-A-T-A-S-H-A-E.com. I look forward to connecting with you. Take care. Okay. And when you say tax lien, tax deed, I'm tracking the deed as you have full ownership. The lien is there mm -hmm. something leaning on against that property, okay? Because mm -hmm. somebody wasn't paying their property taxes. But is there anything mm -hmm. that you would want to elaborate on for those who may not have an understanding? Well, I I personally like tax deeds because I want the property. But you have to know what the laws and rules and regulations are in your area because they are different for state from state to state. So like in Texas, if you buy a tax deed, it's like two years that the people come, can come back and get that property. Like okay. it's so crazy. But whereas like in Kansas, like where I'm looking to purchase property, these people are already behind on their taxes like two or three years. Hmm. So it's immediately your, they have until the day before the sale. So okay. if they don't, redeem until up until the day before the sale if it goes to the sale it's yours unless there's some type of legal something you know in the background like a family member that didn't know about it or something like that but but then in those cases you would get your money back but yeah so it's tax like i have a friend in mississippi she bought like 17 tax deeds mm -hmm. last year year before for like under twenty thousand dollars Fixer uppers moving red, like already. No. <laughs> Most of them are going to be fixer uppers, but okay. like that, those are, yeah. Those are properties, mm -hmm. real life property. Yeah. <laughs> 17. And I like, I don't know if people caught this, and I know just from uh, attending a course that I've mentioned tax liens and went over tax deeds, but you say it, you can purchase it. And if the people come back, they run you your money back that has been spent. Oh, yeah. So, I lose it like we're using yeah. it yeah yeah and and people like in texas the laws in texas you know texas think we they we are own country anyway right. so it's like it if somebody everything okay listen <laughs> so in texas if they come back within the first year to get their property back they have to pay you 25 percent interest mm. on whatever you paid if they come back within the second year they have to pay you 50% interest wow. on whatever you pay. That's a lot. So most people are like, I mean, if you think about it, honestly, they didn't even have the money to pay the taxes in the first place. So now you think they're about to pay the taxes plus the interest and fees and stuff. Like, yeah, it's, mm. it's a lot. Yeah. Pay y'all, people pay y'all taxes. If not, there's a, a lot of investors out there that will come and grab your house. 
but you can still maybe potentially work out a deal and then those people can stay in there maybe if they Mm-mm. get their finances Mm-mm. together. Mm-mm. Ma'am, okay. No, you cannot. You will not stay in there. <laughs> I'll help you. I'll help you get moved. Get moved out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can stay in there for another like two months and then after that. Yeah, I'll help you move. Not you gonna pack yourself <laughs> up. <laughs> You know, went over there and your tire boxes and everything. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get you a little truck and everything. I got a driver. My son just graduated. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's my job. <laughs> that is too funny. Okay, going on into how do you integrate? So the podcast is about like conscious courage and being present and aware, but also having that growth mindset and empowering. And I'm all about the inner healing, which you touched on in the beginning, which is so beautiful on your hundred day journey. How have you integrated your conscious decision making into your work? And you know what? We haven't spoke that much about being an ER nurse, but even if we can bring in some of that, because that's real. Like, yeah. A trauma? Listen, ma'am, how? If I see someone puke, I'm like, I'm about to. And you, who knows what you see, right? Oh, I see it all. I see it all. Some conscious decision making into your place of employment and or real estate. Take it away. Take it away. So I really think that nursing has helped me. I don't know. I nursing has been a blessing and a curse. And I'll say it's been a blessing because it has really shown me how many people really don't live their lives. How many people do not go after their dreams? How many people get stuck? They get complacent. I see people and I'm like you A lot of times I can't even believe it. Like somebody will be like our age or in their 20s or 30s, and they look 80 or 90. Like, and people just give up. And so in that way, it has helped me to really like go after what I want. Because I know tomorrow's not promised. Because yeah, I work in the ER. Like I see death almost every day. So it's, it's helped me to get rid of some fear though. Because when you see the stuff that I've seen, it's like, I can't be scared. Like, and when you see some of the miracles that I've seen, you like, I know God got me. Like, this is crazy that I'm like, you know, helping bring, literally helping bring somebody back to life. So it's been a blessing in that way. But I say it's been, been a curse because it's kind of been my crutch for so long because it's constant, you know, like I know I can count on nursing. I know I can pick up some extra shifts, whereas real estate isn't as predictable Okay. So, uh, or things can, you know, happen in real estate, the market can shift, my house cannot sell, you know, it's just all these things that could happen. But I know that that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I feel like I'm a good nurse, but I feel like I'm good in real estate too. So it's just like, so it's, a, it's, it's just been my crutch. So I need to just fully, I'll be glad when I can fully step away from it and step into real estate full, full, full time. Now, when do you think you'll know, right, that there's that consciousness or that awareness of, okay, it's time to step away, part ways with nursing and jump into real estate full time? I think I'll just feel it. I feel like God speaks to me through different things. Like, it's so crazy, but a lot of people are like, what side of social media are you on? Because I feel like God really talked to me through my social media. Like, my social media is not regular social media. Like, literally, it's like... All the pastors, all the prophets, all the all the things on my on my social media. So I feel like God speaks to me. And then of course, like there are prophetess and you know, people at my church as well who have told me several things. So I feel like when it's time, I'll I'll get a word and I'll know. Good. And that goes all the way back to when you pray, like, okay, Lord, if this is the house, if this is the way I'm supposed to go, and he answered your prayer. So you already know how to talk. And that in itself is a word, y'all. Yeah. So good knowing how God communicates because he communicates with everybody differently. Yes. Yes, he does. And girl, I used to be so mad. Like, God, why you just don't talk to me? Like, you know, people be like, God told me, like, I mean, uh-huh. talk, I wish you talked to me like that. <laughs> and now he talks to me. Yeah. <laughs> in his own light and own way. So 
Is there anything that you would want to add that I didn't ask or that you just would like to share before we transition into your YouTube and the ebook and where people can follow you and all that stuff? So I would just add, like um, you mentioned before, I was or I don't know, was am I don't know. I was a teenage mom. Like I had my son at 15 years old, like but I put him through college. I put myself through college. It's like I am breaking generational curses. I'm changing things and anybody can do it. You just have to, but it's hard to do it if you don't see somebody else doing it, but -hmm. just reach out to people. I think people have this misconception that people who are ambitious or entrepreneurs or rich, that they don't want to help other people and being in the spaces that I've been in, being in the rooms with millionaires and billionaires, I know now that that's not true. So like reach out to people, ask your questions, questions, uh, go to these conferences, like network like crazy and link up with people. Like you never know when you're going to meet somebody that can really change your life just because they want to. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. you have to, you have to be present. You have to put yourself in the spaces that you want to, you know, want to be in and want to grow in. That's so Good. And I, I told someone how in this year, my word, and I don't really choose words for the year, but I came into this year and I said, uh, my word is intentionality. And so I'm going mm-hmm. to intentionally put myself in every room where I uh, where I would like to see myself be. So I yeah. joined a, co- a coaching call, excuse me, how you said people want to teach. People would love to yeah. share the And what I would add on to that is to those listening, like be receptive as I've been learning, especially in the coaching, uh, in the coaching course where I met Whitney, I'm learning, like, I'm so excited and eager to share primarily with my family members, because that's really the only team that I have, but they weren't that receptive. And it was almost Mm -hmm. as my, my words and my excitement and my knowledge was coming off as if somehow, um, like I'm better than or I'm trying to change them. And it's like, no, baby, I just want you to win. Like, and yeah. if I've already paid, not paved the way per se, but if I've already spent this money and this time to learn, why wouldn't y'all want to just take this in? Because I'm sitting in rooms with people that y'all have not met yet. And you may not know disrespect, but you may not meet them. So why not take on some of, some of this wealth of information? So yeah. to me, listening yes it's so good to get in the room and be eager to to teach if you will share some people may hoard the information shame on you but also to those that are on the receiving end like please just be open-minded and know that if someone is seeking support into you they're doing it from a place of love yeah and then know too that your family might not be your people in this season Like, that doesn't mean that you don't love them. That don't mean that they don't love you. But in this season of growth, like, your family might not be your people. Like, I love my family to death, but there is no one in my family that understands what I'm doing. Like, they're like, you're going to another real estate conference? You're going to this? You're going to that? Like, yes, because I don't, I'm not going to work a job until I'm 65 and then be crippled and hunchback and can't get around and and then be trying to live off of $300 a month. Like it's not, it's not for me. I'm not going to do it. And I don't want my son to think that that's 